What's going on guys? All right, so I've done most of the side of this car, well, partially the side of the car. So I have the door handles, the mirrors, the side skirt to do, and then the fender flares. So this is actually a pretty straightforward fender once you remove this piece. This piece is obviously the more complicated piece, but we're doing a little carbon fiber inlay in there. Um, but yes, pretty straightforward. Look how small it is. It's like 20 inches tall and about 44 inches across. We do have obviously this gummy stuff on the front and rear quarter panels. So it's, the vinyl does stick really well to it. We're using Vivid Gloss Nardo Gray. I'm just gonna show you how to wrap this real quick. So let's get to it. So again, what you wanna do is remove your headlight. It's gonna help. And we're gonna position our vinyl. All right. I've also gone to the extent of loosening that bolt right there so I can actually tuck the vinyl in a little bit further, all right? Just by pulling the fender back. Just adds a little bit more coverage. You know what, when it comes down to it, a little bit more is better than a little less. So, so let's do it. All right, so we're in a good spot right there. Double magnet to anchor the film, that way it doesn't pivot. I, you should use three on most normal size fenders. Get the backing rolling so that we don't have to heat out any creases. Perfect, now it shouldn't pivot anymore. Perfect. So as you can see, pretty straightforward. We're gonna draw the vinyl forward. I'm gonna find my body line, which is right there. I'm gonna give it a little swoop with the squeegee. And right there's the body line, and then the body line trails off. So look what happens here. We get a little, things get a little complicated, right? Not that complicated, but a little complicated. So what we need to do is we need to keep a bit of tension on the film. <laughs> that that uh, tearing sound you hear is Johnson fighting with some CYS right now. It's a pretty thick film, so it doesn't quite work the same way as Vivid's does. So in, in the end, this is a lot easier to use. All right. The CYS is extremely sticky. So now that I've got that all anchored, what I want to do is remove my magnet. And again, we're going to draw the film out. And we're going to keep this body line right here and draw the film out, keeping it as smooth as possible. What I need to do now is I use my palm of my hand instead of the squeegee, and this helps get in to that, that little dip there really nicely, all right? Now that I have it like that, I can alleviate the tension. No more stretching in, we're just laying in. So I got all these wrinkles here, pretty easy to squeegee over. If you get one of those, oh, that one won't go away. There we go. You can just reset the film. But again, adding a little tension to the film helps get rid of, or keep the wrinkles away. So we just add a bit of tension to the film, keep it nice and smooth. If we get those really fine ones, we can run our finger over them, they usually go away. Again, that's all to do with pressure. And so right here, what's happening is I have resistance from the top. And you can see here, this is, a, this is a tension line. So if I actually roll this, if I push it back, I can roll that line, right? Instead of stretching. Now what we're doing is we're contouring the film. The film is flopping itself over itself. Over the hood, I'm over the top, 
I removed the little rubber trim piece that goes right here. It's right sitting right here, just so I could tuck in a little bit further. Again, we always go the extra mile, right? We want, we want full coverage. So for down here, we need to fix this up a little bit. So, I'm gonna pull down, gloss it out. Remember, when in doubt, gloss it out. Right. Again, for this area right here, what we want to do is kind of work it in a C shape, okay? I used my finger for that. Could have used, could have used my squeegee. There's not really much of a difference. I could have just done the same motion with a squeegee. Have a bit more, bit more control with my finger. Again here. So when we have stuff like this, what I like to do is come back and forth and do C-shape passes. C-shape or crescent or whatever you want to call it. So all we really have left is the front section. I'm gonna pop it up. Yep. I have, again, I have tension here and when I pop it up, I just push from the back. This controls how far I bring the vinyl back. We have bubbles that we can't really squeegee out. We just push down on them. Usually the squeegee is a bit too soft when we have bubbles and air that's trapped. And that goes with any kind of film. So we use our fingers in that case. And got the whole fender wrapped. Let's finish that little bit up there. So before I do anything, what I'm gonna do is go over this with a bit of heat. I see a wrinkle there, so I'm gonna actually bring the vinyl back and heat it. I don't want that sitting in the middle of the panel. Oh, still there. Now it's gone. So what I'm gonna do here, I don't have to wrap all that far in here. What I'm gonna do first is cut on the tape that I put, right? See? And then I can pull the fender out a little bit and tuck that bad boy in. I'm gonna do a relief cut somewhere around there. There, that allows me to flop that around a little bit easier. You can use the hard edge of the squeegee. And we got solid, solid coverage, all right? So, come down here, float your blade because we don't want to cut into the paint. There's a plastic piece that goes on the back, that goes right here afterwards, black plastic piece. And I'm going to cut right down here right now. So, I start from the in, and I come out first, and then I go down from here. Getting stuck. There we go. Perfect. So now what I can do is I can finish this off. I'm gonna add a bit of tension there just to keep it from wrinkling. And this is, if I have a couple of wrinkles back there, no big deal. It's gonna be completely hidden. And we have so much overlapping that I'm not even concerned about it at all. It's not gonna show any white or peel back or anything like that. Gotta get this up so I can get the wrinkles out. There we go. And that's 
fine. So let's tuck that bad boy in a little bit more there. And then again, the black plastic cover will sit right over top of that and I'll show you that in a minute. What I'm gonna do is open the door just so I can tuck in here really nicely. And just give me better access. Removing that lower section there is super easy. It's just clipped in really, so it's really not complicated. And then I'm gonna pull down slightly here just so we can go a little bit lower because we want to come down. That's why I move, remove this piece because I wanna come down so that we don't see any white when we look down into this little piece that goes here. It might show white if we don't wrap in a little further. So that's what we wanna do. We wanna wrap in a little bit further. Let that shrink. And then I'm just gonna squeegee that there. Perfect. And then I'm going to trim it out. So this I'm going to be a little careful with. I'm just lifting the vinyl up. There we go. And then we're not covering the holes, which is perfect. So I don't have to cut those out. Wrap that around. Done. Now, let's iron out the rest of this here. And then I'm gonna trim right along this edge, the bottom edge. It's fine to overlap this. The uh, the wheel well, or sorry, the fender flares are going to cover, they cover up a lot higher. And look, it sticks pretty good. Like I can't even almost get it off. So it's kind of like an adhesive almost that's, uh, that's there right now. I'm not sure what they use, just kind of black silicone, I suppose. But it sticks just fine. And then as far as this part goes right now, I'm just gonna trim it off right on the bottom. Since I'm gonna have the fender flare sitting there, and this customer is obviously never gonna remove their fender flares because they've cut the fender off. That's why it has this black uh, coating because they're basically sealing up the fender so that it doesn't rust. And that's it, that's all we gotta do for as far as that goes. Now up here, I'm gonna start my cut on the inside. Again, about an inch or so in. Don't want to cut my hand off, so let's get our hand out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to come all the way back to the front. Back of the blade on the opposite panel. I've checked the Subaru fender on the inside, and I have, I'll have enough coverage. And let's get this out of the way. And as far as this goes here, Super straightforward. I'm gonna cut a little bit. There's a plastic piece here. There's a nice little gap also. And if I can do my cut nice and straight, which I did, then we've got as much coverage as we need. And then when it comes to this area here, relief cut, we're gonna tab the top, sorry, the bottom and the top so we can get the corners done nicely, all right? So again, bring it back, heat it up slightly, stretch it around, boom. Heat it up, let that bad boy shrink, all right? Before we do any cutting. Heat up the rest of this, get it all down. Let's throw some heat in there, get all that down. Come in a little bit closer here. Let's find that edge right there. Perfect. And now let's do the top corner. So same deal on the top corner, pull it back slightly, warm it, stretch it slightly, get it underneath. When we get it underneath, then we can add a bit of heat. All right, the paint, the, I can see that the bodywork on the car isn't perfect, so there's a slight crease in the panel, which makes it somewhat look like a wrinkle, but it's not, and it will, it's as good as it will get. So just have to think, sometimes, panels are not perfect themselves. And so it might make your corner not look so perfect. And there's nothing you can do about that. And then we just have the top section to do up by the window. Make 
sure everything's good. So if you really and and you're not sorry, if you're really concerned about your corner, maybe lifting, what you can do is you can heat the heck out of it like this. And basically what we're doing is we're post-heating that corner, all right? And on top of that, I melted the rest of the vinyl away, so I didn't have to cut it. <laughs> so, two birds with one stone. It's perfect. So again, there's only so perfect that I could make that corner since it wasn't uh, a perfect piece of metal. And then we're gonna come down here, I'm gonna squeegee the rest in. It's got a nice little rubber trim in there, so you can basically just get it in up to that rubber trim and that's as much coverage as we need. Now again, we have a corner coming up at the top. So, what do we do? We bring the film back, we heat it a bit, and we stretch it around, all right? And then we give it a boom. All right. Now as far as how far in I gotta go here, I don't really have to go that far because that this trim comes right up to the top edge. That's why I took it out, just because I thought it might be hard to kind of get it tucked in there. I wasn't sure, so I better just get it out of the way. It's super easy. And again, I'm gonna come down probably about a quarter of an inch and just trim this off. I wanna make sure my corner is pretty before I cut. So I'm gonna heat it up a bit. So basically what we're doing is we can like melt the corner around. If it doesn't turn out to be like completely wrinkle free, we can actually heat it so much that we can melt the corner around, the vinyl around the corner. That's what I mean to say. All right, so it's a little bit hot for cutting. Cool down a little bit. And when it comes to cutting, I'm just gonna use the back of my blade and run it as nicely, nice and straight as possible. So there's a little crease in the vinyl or in the not in the vinyl in the in the metal. It's fine, it goes behind the, that rubber trim. I'm gonna get this guy up and under. That edge right there. 